Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We are here at the Village Hotel Coventry ahead of GBM's Into the Fire live on zone in about 36 hours' time. Um, we mentioned yesterday, it's been a bit of a tough week for you, Izzy. A lot of pull-outs, but it's all part of the game. And now we're not long away, and I bet you are absolutely buzzing. Live around the world, Bo. Yeah, that's it. Just want to get it done now. This is a bit as a promoting relief. It's done. The Wayne's done. Got 11 fights on. I've just been told we might have 12 fights on, Joe. I don't know what they're playing at, but there's been a pullout somewhere in London, so apparently that's going to happen as well. But yeah, relieved. Everybody's weighed in. Most of them made the weight, one or two pounds to one a pound or so to shift one of the opponents. But yeah, this is, I'm relieved. Just ready for fight night now. Could relax a little bit. Yeah, we spoke about the card yesterday, but I just want to kind of dial in on someone who looked super intense up there today and we spoke about his presence, Niall Berry. That face-off, it, it weren't kind of violent, it, nothing was said, but you know when you see someone look in someone's eyes, he has got an aura about him and he's a little beast, isn't he? Yeah, without a doubt. He's, he comes out really polite and pleasant and he talks really softly and you think, he, is he going to got it? When he gets in that ring and the bell goes, he's an absolute animal. And I said this for a while, I believe he's one of the best super bantamweights in the country. And you're going to see why. And there's something about the guy, there's certain fighters you meet as a promoter and you think, wow, they've just got that kind of X factor. And I feel like he has, he's exciting. You don't talk exciting, you don't really talk it up, don't man a few words, but he's, listen, let's his hands do the talking. And tomorrow night, I think you're going to see an absolute bomb storm. I think Francis de Rorosca, has come really to win and all. He's not one of these who's come with a losing record. Five knockouts out of eight fights. He fancies his chances, really believes he's going to win. You know, he must have a few quid because he said to me, what's the most expensive steak place you've got in Coventry? Let me go there. So, you know, he's took all his team out. He's bought a big entourage here. And that normally tells you as a fighter, when they bring a big entourage, big team, they come here to pick the win up and pick the belt. So I think that's going to be an absolute bomb stop and probably still fight of the night. A bit like you and your entourage, mate. My entourage is me and you, Joe. <laughs> wow. We're going to go back. Um, go back 12 months when uh, me and you sat down. We had a, a lovely meal in Sheffield. And you said basically what's going to happen. I know you didn't speak about the zone, but you spoke about major TV. So what I want to know really is... Was, was that another meal I paid for, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you took a lot off me, hadn't you, last 12 months? For, yeah. It's all right, yeah. Go on, you say. Yeah, no, I want to know, from that, that day to now, how difficult has the journey been? Yeah, listen, when you enjoy something so much, you kind of, you kind of block the difficulties out and the, and the obstacles and the hurdles you get. Yeah, we had obstacles and doubts and people thinking we can't do this and people putting barriers in the way and, you know, hurdles to jump all the time, but... I, when, when, I, when I signed up for a boxing promotion, I know what I'm letting myself in for. So it doesn't come as a surprise. You've got to be prepared for all these things. And, and that's the thing. That's why it's such a tough business. That's why you hear some of the big promoters talking about how hard it is and how kind of resilient you've got to be. It's the game. And yeah, it's been tough, but I've enjoyed it. So, you know, do you, do you call it tough when you enjoyed it so much? We've just ridden and I believed in my vision and believe where we're going to get. And we're here now, you know, with the biggest sporting platform in the world. Uh, broadcasting our show tomorrow night and yeah we're, we're a happy happy 12 months it's been a good 12 months when you speak to the likes of Ben Shalom Eddie and Frank Warren they, they look grey they look grey haired obviously it's a very stressful job but is there anything that you weren't expecting that has been a difficult task when you signed up to this no I, I've already kind of, I've been in the game for 22 years I've been around boxing a lot even though I've only promoted for two years or so, I've been around it, so I didn't really, nothing surprised me. Expect the unexpected, you know, it's as sad as it sounds, don't trust too much loyalty, you know, people are looking out for self, you know, we're in, the, we're in the hurt business and fighters have a short career, I don't totally understand that, but I try always looking at different perspectives, whether it's a fighter, a fan, and thinking, how does he feel? How's he, what's he going through? And that's kind of kept me grounded and kept us progressing like we have, but... I wouldn't say anything surprised me, Joe. I've, 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 maybe, maybe I'm surprised how much backing I've had. I've had a lot of support from the media and other fighters and people and really took to us, so maybe that surprised me, but nothing on the negative side. Listen, I, I know exactly what I signed up for here. Did you know when you was fighting that you'd become a promoter? or did you, what, was the, what was the light bulb moment? 
No, when I, when, I, when I got my promoter's licence, some people saying, what do you want to achieve out of boxing? What are you going to do? I always had a feeling boxing is going to open doors for me. And whether that's business, whether that's involvement in the sport, I always felt like boxing was going to open doors for me. And, and it did. I wouldn't say I ever kind of said, yeah, I'm going to be a boxer and then be a promoter. It was just kind of a natural progression. That's, a, that was, that's how it happened. Just picking this back up here, it never stops. The important phone calls. Yes. But just when you think... You're already through, done. Yeah. yeah, there's still more problems, but that's what you've got to expect as a promoter now, mate. Yeah, that's like I said, our head of British boxing, Robert Smith, some inquiry about another fight that's going to happen on our show, and I just said, it's just one of those things, and yeah, it's all been sorted out, so we're in a good place. Showtime. It is showtime, and there's a lot of people been coming to your shows from the start, and that kind of credits you because you had the contacts, the likes of like Johnny Nelson, who's been a massive supporter, but now it's growing to an even bigger style. You've only got to look at your broadcast team tomorrow night. Spencer Oliver, Spencer Fearon, Peter Fury. It's, it's massive, Adam Smith. It's, it's a huge, Dave Caldwell, it's huge, huge kind of network that you're building of household names, big profiles. The likes of those names have been on the zone when it becomes the matchroom, Sky Sports. You are one of those players now when it comes to the production as well. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we worked hard. And we know we got into this business, we had to do something different. We couldn't just go steady along, and this is why we went in hard, we invested hard on production. And we spent a lot of money, like where comparison promoters were thinking we're not going to risk it. So we, you know, we've, we warranted where we've got to. You know, we worked hard, we took the risk, I took a lot of risk. Joe, when I started two years ago, I put every single penny in myself, you know. I hardly have anybody funded me whatsoever. I had a few sponsors helping me out, but I put my personal wealth into it and risked it where... Look, most people think what well, there's no guarantee of getting it back, but I believed in a vision. And the first ever in IFL inter uh, interview, I told them that we're going to be one of the best promotion outfits in the country. And I had that vision, I manifested it. And you know, I'm big on manifestation and talking into existence. And I kept telling our team, team we're going to be the best, we're going to be the best in the business. And now they all walk around with their chest out saying they're the best. <laughs> you aren't going to rest here though, you've got this deal, but the first show hasn't even happened yet. You've got to wait till tomorrow night. Fingers crossed, all goes well. But it's about escalating it and escalating it and escalating it until you are on the levels of the promoters we spoke about. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we know we've got to grow our stable of fighters. We've got a certain level of fighters now. We want to grow them. And DAZN's a perfect partner to grow with. They've got a platform to showcase their skill to 200 countries across the world, 20 million subscribers. It's a chance now for them to show how good they are. And this is where we're hoping GBM collaboration with DAZN attracts the bigger names, the household names. That's what we are. Because we've got great fighters at the moment. They've got 8 and all records, 9 and all, But maybe not particularly household names. But that's going to come. And you know this promotion business, Joe? It's, it's, it's all good being a great promoter and a good outfit and putting a good show on. Without the support of a broadcaster, there's only certain levels you can get to. And I feel like we've got a perfect uh, last piece of the jigsaw that really can propel us and push up to that next level. And I think it's going to be a fun 12 to 18 months with the zone. They're really going to push it hard. They're a good, good company to work with. They've got the vision, they've got the drive. They want to really spread boxing everywhere. Yeah, and I think you're going to see, I think you can see levels up with GBM. And this is a time now to, to showcase it. Yeah, something you said to me off camera yesterday about your relationship with the zone is that they said you're part of the family now. Um, you're, you are part of the team. It's a working relationship. They're not just outsourcing a show internationally to kind of keep their feed going. This is a relationship that works both ways and continue to moving forward to just make both companies bigger. Yeah, absolutely. They, they want to see his growth. They want to see the growth. Obviously, they want the numbers. We want the numbers. And they said at start, from get-go, listen, let's, we, you're, you're part of the DAZN family. Let's push you. Let's really work with you. And they collaborate with a lot of our stuff. And the backroom staff team, just they give me an indication how good somebody is to work with. And they said they've had absolutely no problems whatsoever, whatsoever with DAZN. So if we can carry on this relationship and build our relationship and strengthen our relationship, I think we could be a real strong partners with DAZN. And as well as good for us, it's good for DAZN as well, because I do believe not many in the country put a show on like us you know whether it's logistically whether production wise we, we've got a we've got a feel about our shows and everybody who comes with us something about a gbm show and, and they're obviously witnessed that they've seen that they like it and now it's just about upping the levels of fighters and listen we've got some great fighters now but you know we want we want we want the stadium fights that's what i want that's what i'm in this business for to fill out big stadiums to be up there with the big nights you know whether it's in saudi whether it's in america whatever let's, let's travel the world with it and that's 
that's the, that's the growth they're going to give, opportunity they're going to give to zone for us now to really push it to that next level. Your mentality, do you think you'll ever sit back and go, wow, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve? Because no matter how big you get, there is always bigger at the end of the day. Yeah, without a doubt. Listen, I've got that mindset, and this is why we've got so far, so far, so quickly in two years and three months. I want to keep improving. I'm, I'm, I'm your own biggest critic. I'm always trying to improve it. Yeah, we've got to enjoy it because sometimes you go through life and you're always trying to get to the next level, not actually enjoy the moment, you know, relish the moment that we're in, the opportunity being given. But yeah, listen, we're not going to settle. And even if I get to the top, I want to, you've got to keep giving yourself goals in life. It's not even about the financial reward. You want to get out of bed, think you're right, I want to do better with yourself. And, and Joe, we're, we're here for a short time, aren't we? Nobody's guaranteed how long we're on this earth. So. Make most of it and give it 110%. And I, I keep saying to my team, one of the phrases we re use regularly at GBM is, enjoy the moment. Because sometimes we're always looking for the next step and want to be doing better. Enjoy where we've got here. For kids from a working class background, for two years and three months to achieve what we're doing, it's never been done in British boxing. And I, I, I feel like it'll be hard to match what we've achieved from where we've come from. And you know, I don't want to get the crime bucket out and tell him the struggles we've had, but listen, most, most people would have packed up, you know, financially, we've started with shows with freaking literally nothing in our pockets and accounts, but we believed in ourselves, we believed in the vision, you know, we were trying to be writers with people as much as possible, the fighters are liked working with us, and we're in this position by, I believe by Warren, we worked hard, dedication, discipline, a lot of risk, and yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep pushing, and you, you know the answer for that, I'll never settle, I want more and more and more, and, and that's, that keeps you going. Does legacy drive you? Without a shadow of doubt, without a shadow. I'm fortunate I have invested money well. I have got other businesses that my family get looked after with. And for me, it's about creating a legacy, about living the life and look people looking up to and changing lives as well. When I hear, like, get messages off DMs, and that means more than to me than sometimes these big title fights and said, we've been watching your story and we're so proud of what you've done and we feel like we want to get into summer. And stuff like that is, is priceless. It doesn't have a monetary value, but it has an intrinsic value that you cannot put a price on. And that's the kind of thing we're looking for, legacy, of course. Yeah, financially it's great, everybody wants some money, we all want to earn money, I still want to earn money. But to have that legacy and, and respect and, and uh, honourability amongst people is priceless. And some of that I kind of strive off, it's a big ethos in me, before I got into boxing promote, uh, promotion, and yes, of course, legacy is a ma massive thing. You mentioned your family there. I know you'll never sit back and relax, but they must be proud. Mate, uh, even my family doubted me. That's the only truth, and that you can imagine. I've, you know, I grew up in, uh, so I grew up in a house of six siblings, five sisters, and I, I'm the only. My brother passed away in 2005, so I lost my brother, my only brother I had, and that was a tough time. That's been one of my biggest motivators because when you've buried one of your loved ones, everything else becomes easy. It's not normal to bury one of your kids, or your sons, or your brothers, or your siblings at young age. And when I buried my brother in 2005, and he was 12 year old. I always say life become easy after that because what, well, that's the worst that can happen. And after that, everything had a level. And this is why the stress is, sometimes you get fight week and people stress, oh, opponents pulled out, this has happened, this guy's fucking us up, I go relax. We're all here, we're all healthy, we're all going another go, let's go again. And that's the same mindset, that's the exact mindset has got us where it has. And that's the mindset that's going to carry us to the next level. And the other big factor in us is, and I don't, I don't, I won't say this is an arrogant thing, I don't ever... I'm not ever in order of another promoter or any, or, or any promotion outfit. I don't look at them and think, oh, we can't do that. I look at that thing and think, we can very easily do that. And that's a, a kind of having no inferior mentality about me whatsoever. But, you know, if I look back, my family and my brothers played a massive role in my life. And uh, I, go, I go every week to see my brother, so he's buried in Sheffield. I go every week, and that's my reality, realisation about what, how long we're here for. You know, you were 12 years old. I've lost many friends since then. And, and they're the kind of little things who've made me I am because... A lot of guys out there don't really know my in-depth story. It's only about Izzy Asif, a promoter. There's a reason we've done this. There's a, there's a deeper reason. And there's a reason I've become who I am and the mould of the way I am. I've had a lot of, you know, obstacles, a lot of, you know, adverse kind of things happen in my life. And, but I could have been in a very different place. Yo, I'm an extremely lucky guy and I'm fortunate every single day. And I just, I just keep living the dream. Well, we keep going. And there'll be people out there who think we can't do it. They've got the entitled to their opinion. I don't ever hold them against it, unless they say it to my face and then it's, no, I'm joking, no, no, no. Who's that? No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. When you see Danny Quartermain lifting up a European title, when you see Tysi Gallagher becoming the second ever female British title, when you see 
yourself signing that deal with his own. Do you think about your brother and think how far you've come? All the time. And to be honest with you, I don't stop thinking about him. Yeah. Every single week I've got a ritual, I go to a graveyard. And the reason I go to a graveyard every single week of fight week is because fight week offers a lot of stresses. But when you go to a graveyard and see people who've passed away at 20, 12, 25, 30, 35, 40, it gives you the realisation that, listen, there's, nobody's here forever. And that's the, worst, that's the worst so-called can happen in life. Everything else is just trivial, isn't it? Boxing is business. So when you have these obstacles, people say, I smile through you know, adversity and, and, and trials and you know, things going wrong. I kind of half smile through it thinking, oh, we're all right, we're healthy. You know, we're, we've got our sanity, we've got our health and faculties in place. And as long as you've got that, you're happy. My brother's a massive, massive influence in my life. And it's, it weren't easy growing up with five sisters. You know, I had to learn how to look after them, but listen, I'm fortunate. I've had a good upbringing, a very, uh, a very diverse upbringing and all. Where where I grew up, like I was taught about respect to everybody, every ethnicity, every colour. You know, when I went to hospital, my brother got looked after people from every single colour there going. You know, the, it was the black, white, Chinese. They look after you. And people are people, and I got really instilled that hard in me. And you look at our team, how diverse it is, and how mixed it is, and that's been one of my massive successes, not just in boxing but in business. You know, I've been in, I've had my own business for 27 years. You know, I've, I've you know, I've, you know, like I said, if I retired tomorrow from boxing, I couldn't live and live comfortably. But I want, I want, I want to achieve more. I want to give something back to this sport. I love the sport. I love, I love being a fighter. But I feel like I didn't fulfil what I wanted as a fighter. I didn't get the belts and titles. And this is a fulfilling a void in my life. And this is why it's more than money. This is why you can't put a price on my success. And this is why we're doing so well. And I've got a great team as well. You know. I keep saying it, but I keep telling everybody we're one of the best teams in British boxing. Even now, Adam Smith's one of them. You've got matchmakers. We've got a young, diverse team, young, creative team as well. And so we're in a very, very good place. But, I, you know, who knows where we're going to be in two years? You know, we could be up there with the big boys. We could, you know, let's just see. Who knows? I could be sat on the beach, give it all up. You never know. We spoke about the race thing before because obviously you were the first British Asian boxing promoter licensed by the British Boxing Board of Control and obviously you are proud of that but it doesn't really bother you not really because you don't really see colour. You look at your shows, there's Asian, black, white. It's very, very multicultural and you, you don't really want to be known as that. You just want to be known as a top boxing promoter. Yeah, listen, I got respect and love from people of all colours. I never see colour. If you're, if, if you're wrong, you're wrong. And if you're a cunt, you're a cunt. You're not a cunt, Joe. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would say different. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just think, uh, sorry for the language, ladies. Apologise. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't, I've never seen colour. Never had been my kind of style. Even when I was growing up, maybe, you know, I grew up in a predominantly kind of Asian area. And like, I, I, but I've never seen that. You know, I was a big football fan at 15 year old. I used to mix with the football lads and I was probably one of the only ones in the crowd. I've never, never been bothered about it. By it. And it's been probably one of my biggest successes because I, 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 I'm so diverse in my friendship and networking, friends from different colours, different groups, social ladders. It's helped me massively. And, and you've seen our team and our events. It's about, we need that. We need communities, communities to come together because, listen, we're always getting told to separate and segregate and there's always division cause. For me, just get on with everybody. There's, there's wrong people in every single colour, creed, race, religion going. And I've learned, just be right with people and treat them like equally and that, irrelevant to that. So, yeah, but yeah, I'm, the first, I'm proud of me heritage. I'm the first British Pakistani promoter in the history of this country. Probably one of the only ones in the world is proud, but I've not, I've not got there, I've not got here by the race card. I've got here, buried for GBM and me and my team, how well we've done in the last few years. I want to speak to you about image, because I walked out of your show in Sheffield last year, and I actually thought I was at a supercar show. Um, from outside the arena to inside the arena to your new suits every time you get do a new show, you fucking love it, don't you? <laughs> we're in the showbiz business I keep saying this we're in the entertainment business and yeah it's the glitz the glamour and the suits it's all part of the game you know it's all part of the showbiz I'm obviously the lead promoter I like changing my suits every so often probably every show alright a couple of times a show but I'll have your hand-me-downs no, <laughs> yeah so yeah the cars at least I've got a lot of friends in business as well and they come and they bring the big cars and glitz and glamour but 
it, it gives it gives that glamour, glamour factor to our show. A lot of people who come to our shows and see it got a different feel to it, and it's all part of the entertainment business and glimpse and glamour and your kind of Vegas looks. Listen, it's just show, we're in showbiz now, so that's what you're gonna get. Last one tomorrow night, live on the zone. Final call, sell me that show. Listen, what a show it is, top to bottom, absolute fireworks, bomb storms. We've got three belts on the line. I've heard it could be four, could be another one. I'd, the fights to watch out for is definitely going to be now Berry. I believe he's one of the best super bantam mates in the world. We've got Danny Quarterman defending his IBO title, fighting for the WBO title, and we've got a complete war of a fight with River Wilson, Ben, and Mark. Mark. I believe that could be the fight of the night. I reckon they could steal it, but top to bottom, it really is a packed out card. We've got the two Irish duos, Kieran Malloy and Tieran Badley, 400 amateur fights between them. He would said to me, Yesterday he goes, I want Adam Azim next fight. And I'm like, Tina, you need a few fights, yeah? It's a big name, but they fancy self, you know, they really got a lot of talent. And it's going to be a cracking event, cracking night. And I've chucked a knockout bonus as well. Knockout of the night gets a cash bonus. So, yeah, it's going to be live on the zone. It's a massive day, historic day for us and all. And watch out for, for some fireworks, knockouts, entertainment, dramas, tears, everything. Anyone think you'd be a promoter, mate? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy Asif tuned in tomorrow night live at the Sky Dome Arena, Coventry, 5 o'clock on the Zone's YouTube channel, 7 o'clock on the main broadcast. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Thank you very much, mate. Top man. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.